Boom. Hey, Internet. This one is for either my art or fashion school students or those just wanting to become a designer and maybe you're doing it self-taught or you're just about to land that job or you're in the process of it. Um, I spoke at a college not too recently and this 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 whole topic got brought up so I want to give this to the community so I could give some value uh, to the demographic that are aspiring designers or right right around that area about about to lock it in or maybe you're there so this will come in, into you in a really good time uh, now most of you know if you're subscribed to the channel that I started working professionally in 2000 at a very small skate company and I worked at I've worked at a small skate company um, all the way to a 60 million dollar uh, apparel machine um, actually the last company that I worked at where as the brand director had uh, quite a few different brands we had maybe eight brands going under this in the same building um, and then we used some of the same resources so I've worked in all kinds of different environments and I've done the hiring for it um, as well so Super qualified to talk about it uh, because it's real brass tacks of me being at the desk and being a young designer um, um, over 18 years ago uh, and being uh, the guy that hires and then that directs the actual team and does the actual hiring um, and job interviews with those people. Um, and I'll drop a few videos about that as well, but that's a separate video. So there's three things I want to go over um, that designers need to know in, ter in terms of acclimating after you've you finished you have a great portfolio um, and you're you're all graduated uh, th a few mistakes that I made in my first design job that I want to share with you is number one you have to understand that the company has an obje objective okay so you need to really ground yourself and understand that and not in a way where you just kind of learn it and you look at the bio and the mission statement of the company online and you're able to kind of spit it back out for the job interview you really need to know the essence of what the company is and it might take you a little bit of time in the beginning of working with the company to really kind of feel that but um, taking that seriously as an actual goal is something that I never did um, or didn't do clearly with the, some of the first brands that I worked with. So uh, just as in school where you might be just working towards a project, the goal the whole time is one to become maybe the best designer that you can become. And I'm talking about fashion design, graphic design, anything within the arts. Um, it might be to become the best designer that you can come and just and just grow creativity creatively as much as possible that might be your outcome uh, and to you know on an individual level it might be just to drop the best the dopest projects and just you know try to outdo everybody if you're competitive in that nature but in an individual sense it might just be to grow well so you are your own company. You're, you are working for yourself in that in that sense. When you're working for a company, now they're paying you and they have you on payroll and they have a desk and an iMac for you to work on and they've paid for Adobe Suite at work um, for you to pump out things that are artistic in nature that they need your artistic abilities to be put onto their web assets or if it's actual design work. Um, but there is a commercial need there so understand that the company is there and you are there for for the company okay a lot of designers will feel like um the company is there for them and and um, that their their abilities are very very unique and they can be they can be but remember you went to school with 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 a lot of other people that graduated and and if you got the job that means you beat a lot of people out for it so so kudos to you but understand that you are working for a company so there's an objective and you should know that and you should see understand how your role works in that objective so that's number one number two you're working on a team now okay so uh, let me use another analogy in school where you might be preparing your portfolio and your projects uh, you might be skipping rope which is a single rope okay so you're 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 jumping rope uh, with yourself at your own pace because you're gonna get project by project and you might have one or two projects that's done with a group that might be collaborative but by and large a lot of your projects are taken apart the group 
gives you uh, feedback and the professor gives you feedback, you improve and get a better project out um, and that's the nature of it. Now, using that same analogy, working in a company is like double dutch. So uh, there's an art director or a creative director or maybe it's just the boss if it's a small company. Um, so, so it's more like a double dutch is in flow. So you have, you have a, some leader of the company, where the, whether it's a design director or a art director, and then you have maybe other designers that work alongside you that you need to work with. Or maybe you have to work with a marketing director who's going to tell you what your marching orders are as well. So there's already a flow, and that's double dutch. you got, you got to jump into their flow, but bring your abilities and your unique skills. So it's an adjustment. But people don't think about it when they're in art school. All you're thinking about is your projects. Well, now you're getting paid to work on someone else's projects, but to bring your sensibility to it. And that's what it is. So you need, need to understand that. It's not like um, a visa commercial where you go to uh, art school and then uh, maybe if you start your own studio and your own firm, to do graphics and to web assets for a couple different companies. You can do that. That's a whole nother set of videos though in terms of being an entrepreneur and that comes with its own set of headaches um, which is why a lot of people work because they don't want to deal with the logistical side of running a business. So you are working within a business uh, where in school where you're, you know, you're skipping rope by yourself. Now you're double dutching. Okay. So you need to get into the flow that's already established and you, you got to play well with others. So, um, you know, that's an adjustment that a lot of designers need to know that they need to make. Third thing I want to bring up, I kind of touched on for the first part and kind of sets a tone for a lot of this is ego. Um, now some people have a very boisterous ego where they're like, oh, I graduated top of my class and I'm awesome. I'm a great designer. I'm amazing. And you might have killed it in class or been top at your school, but remember there's hundreds of art schools and then not to mention designers that are uh, also amazing, that are more self-taught or maybe got an AA at an unrecognized school who just has really, really raw talent. Um, some of the best designers I've ever met are self-taught. Uh, and so who cares if you're the top at your class, you still got to grind and wake up in the morning, get in there and pay your dues at this workplace, you know? Now, um, you know, everyone's gonna have a crazy manager. Everyone that works in art is gonna have different ways that they approach. So a design director and a, uh, you know, an art director, anything artistic is gonna have its own tinge of different uh, colorful personality. So I'm saying you can have a crazy manager at some point and um, maybe it's just it's just their style just doesn't jive with you. Of course that's happened to me. There's probably a lot of people that can't work the way, the way I set the tone for work. But in that case, it's just trying to find out where, where you mesh. However, that's a different subject, I think, than um, really putting the work in and being humble and knowing when you might be showing too much ego in uh, the approach of your work, okay? Now, like I said, you can have a boisterous ego and you can spot those a mile, mile away. If that was in my art department, I'm firing them. I've said many times before, I'd rather have the fifth best designer with no ego, easy to work with, really, really cool person. That's what I'd rather work with than the number one designer because to me that margin is way worth it to trade. But some, sometimes people have an introverted ego and it's very quiet and they just really disagree with a lot of the art direction that's going on or, you know, if their designs get shut down, they get really personally hurt. Now, hopefully you got enough of that in college where you can understand, but I understand getting paid to do it and being in the seat and getting paid to design is a different feeling when designs get shut down. I used to get very hurt when I was in my early 20s, um, sometimes. Uh, but now, I mean, um, you guys know if you subscribe to my channel, I mean, I'm 40 years old. But by the time I was in my late 20s, you can tear down my whole season of work. And I just want to know what do we need to do to change it? What makes it more sellable? Because my ideas, my, given all my experience, might be the wrong direction. So if you're working with someone um, and you find it, you're an introverted ego person, Try to step back and, and assess the entire situation and try to give credit to know that they're in that spot for a reason, barring the other 
uh, story I'm saying where some people get put in leadership and they're the wrong people to put in leadership. I know that that happens, but you have to be able to look at it uh, in a clinical manner and say, uh, maybe I need to adjust my uh, feelings towards the way I approach my work, right? So again, you're working for another company, they're paying you for your tel your skills and abilities, but they have a flow, they have something that works or probably works. If you have suggestions to make it better, I, I suggest you do present it, but um, in a way where you know that you wanna grow the company, you know? Um, this is not uh, your own separate company because that's a whole nother set of videos if you want to be a, a sole proprietor of your own company um, That's a different journey to be an entrepreneur. Okay, so so three things uh, that I want to say For first-time designers or you're just getting your first design job that will help you navigate a lot easier. Okay, so uh, any other questions on, on any of those things uh, please drop them all down below. I have a few more of these that happens from my discussions. Uh, if you want me to speak at your college, please email me at hi at johnphenom.com. Um, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye.